Instant Monsters presents Gelatin Burn Makeup. Part 2. Coloring. In part 1 of this tutorial, I showed you how to create a burn makeup using gelatin. Rather than a prosthetic, this makeup is built up right on the face with almost no prep time. Once the structure of the burn is in place, it's time to add color. For this tutorial, I'll be using an acrylic-based, alcohol-activated makeup, which is activated with 99% alcohol. You shouldn't use 70% or 91%, which are the two most common types of rubbing alcohol. These won't dissolve the product completely, and you'll end up getting little chunks of pigment in your makeup. 99 is the way to go. One of the great things about alcohol-activated makeup is that you can use it either as a thick paint or in thin washes, almost like watercolors, all depending on how much alcohol you mix into it. For this burn, I'm starting with a dark reddish brown to accentuate the deepest parts of the makeup, to make them look like they sink even deeper into the skin. This is more of a personal choice than anything else. You can always start with the base color and do the shadows later. I like to see where they are from the start. Once my shadows are in place, I'm going to go over all of the gelatin in a bright, irritated looking red. Notice that I'm extending my color past the edge of the gelatin onto John's skin to help the two blend together. If the pigment is too strong, I can blot it away before it dries or use a little alcohol on my finger to soften it back down again. The makeup I'm applying for this tutorial is for a haunted house or Halloween party, where the lighting will be dark and so the colors need to be more intense to stand out. If you're planning for your makeup to be seen in a well-lit area, just apply the colors with less intensity than you see here. Once again, continuing the colors I'm using onto John's skin will help to make the burn look much more realistic. A hard line of color at the edge of the gelatin will look very fake. Once my bright reds are in place, I'm going to go back in with my shadow color and punch them up a little more. Don't make them all the same color and intensity. The darker these areas are, the deeper they'll look, and the lighter they are, the more shallow. Once the shadows are finished, I'm going to use a yellow color to accentuate the highlights. Yellow is one of those colors that really pushes a burn makeup into an emotionally uncomfortable place. Something about that yellow can really make people cringe. It makes a burn look raw, irritated, even pussy. Remember, if you're planning to enter a costume contest, you want your makeup to have as much impact as it can. The last step is to go in with more red and yellow to break up any smooth surfaces. The more texture you have, the more visually interesting your burn makeup will be. A great extra step is to sponge a little KY liquid or gel onto your burn. This will give it a shiny look that makes the burn look very fresh and irritated. Once the makeup is done, I'm going to arrange John's hair to hide any edges that I don't want people to see. If you need to use hair gel, that can help to keep the hair in place for much longer than just brushing it into place. And here once again we have the finished makeup. When you're ready to remove it, just peel it off of your skin. The gelatin in your hair will dissolve in hot water, either in the sink or in the shower.
The string broke. <laughs>